The average lifespan of a Fortune 500 company is about 40 odd years, right? So that fact has just surprised me and many people in the literature. So there is this theme of research that uh, that can be sort of uh, put under the umbrella of something known as creative destruction, right? So the idea that, you know, there are these new ideas that are brought in by startups and entrepreneurs but which result in vanquishing incumbents, right? There's been a lot of work in the literature just to understand what are the roots of creative destruction. So why do firms go away? Survive in an evolving business world, incumbents need to adapt to radical technological changes. To keep up means to innovate. But what's stopping firms from innovating? While there is a lot of work on understanding the internal factors that stop firms from innovating, like managerial cognition and firm's inertia, there is very little information on the external factors that could hamper innovation. This study examines one external stakeholder, the shareholders, and their role in shaping incumbents' response to radical technological change. What we argue in this paper is that firms are valued for two different things, right? Uh, the first reason why shareholders might value a firm is for their current profits, right? The second reason why shareholders might value a firm might be for their future growth. So what we infer is that firms that are valued for their tangible information, things that shareholders are likely to see in their books of accounts, are less likely to uh, adopt ICT. Whereas firms that are valued for their intangibles or for their future growth are more uh, likely to uh, adopt ICT itself. So this uh, essentially goes back to the hypothesis that uh, firms that are valued for their future growth are somewhat relatively unconstrained when it comes to investing in innovation. This was understood from a data set of 34,673 firm year observations between 1984 to 2010. The market returns on a firm were decomposed into tangible and intangible returns. And that was used to measure the incumbent's propensity to adapt to ICT. It seems like Amazon has a lot of leeway to spend on innovation and coming up with nifty technologies uh, every now and then. Whereas if you're thinking about an incumbent that's existed uh, for quite some time like GE, you don't get the same sense. Perhaps GE was valued for their current profits, which might essentially impose constraints on GE to invest in future growth or innovation. Whereas a firm like Amazon, which is not valued for their current profits, but for their future growth, may be more likely to invest in innovation. Comparison between Tesla and BMW shows the same. In 2018, when Tesla was not making a profit, its value in the stock market was as much as BMW which was significantly more profitable. To understand what worsens or strengthens this relationship between current profits, future growth and innovation intensity, the paper explores a little deeper from a corporate governance lens. First, the effects of long-term incentive plans on corporate governance were studied. So long-term incentive plans are typically used to align the interests of the managers with that of the shareholders. So the first set of findings is that any alignment mechanism that improves alignment between the shareholders and the board intensifies pressures, right? Uh, and these pressures, like we spoke about, are of two types, right? There could be pressure to invest in innovation, right? Which is when a firm is valued for intangible information. Uh, there is pressure not to invest in innovation, which is when a firm is valued for their tangible information. Both these pressures intensify, right? So if there is a negative pressure asking a company not to invest in innovation, this negative pressure intensifies. If there is a positive pressure asking a company to invest in innovation, this positive pressures also go up. LTIPs magnify the negative effect of tangible returns by 2% and amplify the positive effect of intangible returns by 4%. Secondly, the different types of shareholders were studied. You could think about shareholders being of two types, right? I mean, there are these large institutional investors slash block holders who might be holding a, a block of shares in a firm, right? For them, it's not that easy to liquidate their positions. They're naturally long-term focused simply because they cannot liquidate their positions very soon, uh, very easily, right? Um, they also have incentives to monitor because relative to the gains that they might get from innovation in the future, the cost of monitoring is not that much. 
but exactly the opposite is true of retail shareholders let's think about a small retail shareholder right so they would have no incentives to monitor the shareholders and they are somewhat investing simply to maximize returns in the short run so now if you go and tell them you know as a board of directors saying that look you know what i'm going to invest in something that's going to take 10 years for for a payoff to happen but that also means that your current profitability is going to come down right uh, the retail shareholders are essentially going to rebel in data terms when there's block holding they magnify the negative effect of tangible returns by 7% and improve positive effect of intangible returns by 5% thirdly the independence of the board was studied it was found that greater board power reduces incumbents likelihood to embrace ICT in the innovation literature nobody has implicated the shareholders for a failure of a firm to be innovative despite icd being this big blockbuster transformational technology why isn't every firm benefiting from it? one constraint might be the this idea of uh, the separation of ownership and control which might essentially create problems for firms Uh, to adopt any radical technology this uh, research essentially tells you about the frictions that actually happens uh, with firms adopting this general purpose technology so this in some ways uh, is an indirect answer to why these uh, general purpose technology despite their well known benefits don't diffuse uh, across the economy